owners of Carl's MoGraph FX add-on for Blender get another free update today. This time allowing particles and other collections to generate curves based on their movements. I'm going to show you how to make one of these animations you see which should teach you enough to make all of them. If you don't own it, my add-on is available on Blender Market. Let's look at how easy this is. First, just add a UV sphere, head over to the tab and add a particle system. Drop the number to say 220 or so, uh, bring the lifetime up to 100. We're going to kill the gravity in the particle system there. And they will be coming out kind of evenly, randomly, and that will be good. What we need is some turbulence. Add force field turbulence. First, we'll up the strength, and the size uh, can be anywhere from 2 to 3 for this project. We want some kind of large swoops, and raising size from 0 will give you that. So we can see the particles are kind of curving a little as they flow. Looks good. Noise can also help here. And you can change the seed on this. You can change the seed on the particle system as well here. It'll give you a different result as to what comes out first and where. This will look very good. So what we need is a new object. Add mesh icosphere. This is just going to be our particle stand-in. So we probably should throw a material on it. I'm just going to make a generic emission. I like blue and gold because they're uh, my channel colors that I chose because I like them together. Now we can go to the Track Particle Positions tool. We'll pick our emitter and we'll pick our icosphere. We'll call this our particle and emitter. We don't want a rigid body. We don't care about rotation, and we will use death as for when the particle uh, stops tracking. We won't be emitting anything, but down here you will see a new option, trace curves. There's only one setting for this, curve decay, and I will show you what it does on our first run here. I'm going to save my project and run the tool. It is tracing every particle's position and creating a curve of that path, as you can see. Very nice. Kind of looks like hair or something. But when we select the curves, we'll see what the script has done. We see the particle come out, and you can see that it's getting a little fatter behind it, and that 20 frames after the particle leaves a spot, the curve has decayed. I used 35 the first time I did this, we want them to live a little longer than 20, right? So they'll live just over a second. And when the particle dies is where the curve will stop. And the curves come with a material already set. It is linked, but um, yeah, it doesn't have anything special going on. So I'm going to give it an emission and we'll make it blue. So um, I'm going to center on this. Come back and center my camera and get this out of the way so it doesn't contribute light to the scene. So you can see that it's nicely created curves that are all animated and uh, they produce light and the particles both produce light. You can use other features with this as well. Uh, one thing that we need to do here if we want it to look good is select all of our objects and this is just a tip, I'll do it again later, but we go down here to <laughs> here keyframe visibility pick use birth frame and now all of the particles my script made will be hidden until their birth so we don't have that cluster of particles there what i did was i actually made a duplicate of the original sphere the emitter and i took the particle system off of it and i just went in and gave it a new material and i cranked up transmission Gave it a little roughness, brought the surface roughness down, and now it'll be like a see-through object made of glass. It needs shade smooth, but you can see that that'll actually look pretty good. So I've made a stand-in for the emitter. Uh, since they come from the surface anyway, it, it looks decent. Uh, there are things you can do to make this look better, so I'm going to nuke all the curves. 
and I'm going to nuke all the objects and I'm going to show you how we can do another thing to make this better. So we'll go to our particle and we know that we're going to use 35 for our curve decay. The particles live for 100 frames. So we want something to happen here 100 frames after its birth. So I'm going to go to the particle and I'm going to change the scale to 0 0.05. Why am I doing that? Because I want it to be keyframed to the exact size of the particle. I'm gonna bring this over to keyframe 80. We know they live for 100 frames. So around the last 20 frames, I'm gonna tell it to go from that to zero and it'll disappear. We also have the ability to animate materials. I'm gonna head over to the shading tab and show you the setup. It's really simple. You just have your principal BSDF and you use a layered weight with a mix shader with an emission. And the layer weight can do a Fresnel. Change this to a timeline uh, so we can see it before it's uh, shrunk. Okay, so you can see that the layer weight is mixing based on the Fresnel, which is like where light uh, bounces or bends around an object. Uh, so if you set it really low and you set emission pretty high, you can get a kind of nice diamond glowy look. And I like that. So I'm going to do that for this particle. I'm going to make it a nice glowy orange. And what I'm going to do is as the particle shrinks, I'm going to make its emission strength jump a lot. So it's going to get super bright while it dies. It'll just keep it kind of visible even when it's small and it'll uh, trigger a glow with our compositing. Or if you use Eevee, just bloom. Okay? So we've got this keyframe to scale down and glow brighter as it dies. So if we use our track particle position tool, we can choose use all animations and material animate. And since we've correctly set when it starts, we don't want to offset the start. We could tell it to start earlier or later, but we're just going to leave it at zero. You could tell this to start 35 frames after it stops and leave it visible. And what it will do is stay in place and shrink while the tail comes in. I actually think I'm going to try that. That sounds cool. I want to see what it looks like. I didn't do it on the original, but you know, you can modify this however you see fit. So let's run the script again. Only this time we have use all animations and material animations selected. So it'll make curves and it'll do all that at once for us. Okay, so all that I need to do since I redid that is bring back the emission on my curves here. And great, I've made intergalactic sea men. Oh, God. So let's look at what it looks like here. Ooh, it's quite different from the last time I did it. It's got a nice neon look to it. Uh, you can increase the strength. And let me show you something. Uh, it's just a tip that every Blender user should know. If you pick all your curves and you go down here to your curve settings, you can change the depth of the bevel. And if you hold Alt while you click... We can make these a third of the size they are, which would then allow us to increase the amount of emission with it, uh, and kind of get by with it without making it absurd. Oh, interesting. So the only thing we haven't done is, like last time, select the objects, go over to the utility section and reveal on birth frame. And now those will be invisible and not contributing light to the scene. And there you have it. It looks very different to my last time. Uh, I used much more emission on my little guys coming out. Let me show you how I added the second ones. So we know that these curves last 35 frames, right? So if we select the entire collection, hit shift D and duplicate them in place, hit escape. 
and now GX17.5. Now I'm going to do it one more time. D escape. Go down here to this. GX17.5. Now every single particle has been duplicated will follow the same curve or basically the animation of the first one but there will be one in the beginning middle and end and because that's going to make more light i'm going to lower the emission on my uh curves shader so now there will be two on each line and they'll be animated so i'm going to render this out and show you what that looks like so I actually like my first one a bit better because of the brightness on the particles, but I like other things about this one as well. But all in all, it came out great, and you can see that you don't spend much time creating the cool curves, you just spend some time tinkering the look to suit your taste. If you found this helpful and you don't own my add-on, go buy it. If you do own it, leave a review on my add-on. I could really use more. Thank you for watching and have a great day. I'll be back with more tutorials soon.